All right, let's talk about same-sex couples and same-sex relationships. Now, in a previous video, I, also, I already addressed some issues with using terms that enforce a false dichotomy. Same-sex relationships uh, can ignore the fact that you have a variety of, uh, of gender identities possible for people. Uh, and so that, um, you know, we might be losing some data uh, in the way that we ask our questions, the way we categorize people for this type of research. But this type of research is important because so much research has emphasized cisgender, heterosexual or heterosexually leaning couples uh, that we really don't have, we, we've lacked good data on alternative types of couples. And so it's important that we're starting to get that data. All right, so we're still not getting all that we could, but let's talk about some of the differences that we've seen with same-sex relationships compared to opposite-sex relationships. All right, in general, we see a lot of similarity. There are a lot of, a lot of similar patterns that we see in same-sex compared to opposite-sex relationships. Um, so some of the differences that we have found. What are the differences that we have found? Commitment is still related to investments, but the types of investments differ slightly. Uh, heterosexual men, and I always, when I see that right away, I'm like, did they ask if they were bi, or did they just assume since, I guess, you know, men dating other men, that's a more accurate term. All right, so men dating other men, they feel committed based on tangible, I'm sorry, I started the wrong way, men dating women. All right, men dating women. Men dated women feel committed based on tangible investments, like jointly shared objects. All right, so things you can look at and hold and be like, we bought this together. Whereas men dating men care more about intangible investments, like sacrifices made to be in the relationship. They value, they value those more, at least based on you know, things like self-report data. Now, um, we also see, remember how we talked previously about how similarity is a strong predictor of attraction? Well, this relationship is still there for same-sex couples, but it's weaker, right? So similarity is not as strong a predictor uh, of attraction for same-sex couples compared to opposite-sex couples, right? So, you know, what do we make of that? We're not sure yet, but hey, it's there. We can explore that further with, with other research. Now, another big difference we see though is dating can be considerably more difficult and consider a lot of guesswork and risk for same-sex couples or those who are interested in being in a same-sex couple because you have this thing called a reduced field of eligibles. This is your, you know, your fancy official term for the people that you could possibly date, right? We kind of go into any crowded situation and assume that, okay, most people here are probably, they're probably straight, right? They're probably straight. They are probably, you know, if they're a man, they're probably looking to date a woman, all right. But when you're interested in same-sex relationships, there's a lot, a lot more uncertainty and guesswork about, okay, who here is up for that? All right, because a lot of people are closeted. It's not like people, or even if they're not closeted, they don't go walk around with this, a sign, gay, hey, you know, it doesn't work that way. And there's just fewer, more people, more people are interested in opposite sex relationships than same sex relationships. So you have a smaller pool of eligibles, a uh, field, smaller field of eligibles, and it's often difficult to figure out, okay, who is in that field? You know, is that person that I find that cute, are they even interested in same-sex relationships? Or is that something that they don't do? That's something they're not interested in. Um, and so that can make, that's a, a, an additional extra challenge to dating. When you add that on top of the fact that in some areas there's more hostility, prejudice, discrimination for same-sex couples. They might not feel straight. Uh, and there are things like apps nowadays that can make things easier, but then you will hear stories of people creating a fake pro profile just so they can harass people or worse yet, assault and attack people uh, for responding to uh, someone's, someone's profile, someone's, um, you know, reaching out for a date. <sighs> All right, so... Um, in general, 
we see mostly similarities when we compare opposite sex and same sex couples. All right, so this is one of those areas as we watch future research, we are gonna learn more. That's kind of like what we know now. It is not enough. It's the beginning. It's where we are now. Hopefully we'll know more in the future. And as Amez mentioned, hopefully we will be more inclusive with our language so we can not create too many false dichotomies. All right, folks, that is the end of the, that's the end of the videos for the chapter on interpersonal attraction. It's also the end of the videos for social psychology. All right. So uh, uh, if you're interested in taking further classes, uh, mostly I teach developmental psychology type classes. But if you're interested in social psychology type topics, uh, it may be a good idea for you to take our class in group dynamics. And then if you're interested in like business related topics, we also have industrial psychology and organi organizational psychology topi topics that might be interesting to you. All right, now I gotta go write the final exam.